Mark Bailey from Fig Securities joins us now live from Sydney. Mark, hello to you. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, when it comes to that NFP jobs data, uh, it does really seem to be uh, all in the detail. Uh, markets seem somewhat disappointing about the uh, somewhat disappointed about the uh, one tenth of a percent rise in earnings. Um, nonetheless, the figure still shot the lights out. Yeah, good morning, Natalie. It was kind of a mixed bag in terms of the, the data from the non-farms payroll. As you kind of rightly summarised, the, the headline figure there was very strong at uh, 227,000 jobs created, well above expectations there. Uh, even though the unemployment rate did, did tick up slightly to 4.8%, that was largely driven by an increase in participation rate. So again, that was positive. But as you rightly point out, and this is uh, one of the Fed's key measures that has given them a bit of comfort in terms of being able to dial back those uh, uh, future interest rate hikes the actual wage growth was very very disappointing only at 0.1 percent month on month and two and a half percent year on year so that's the slowest since August last year and I think again it gives the Fed a bit of breathing space as to the next hike and you did see that in terms of what happened in the US Treasury so after the after the um, the non-farm payrolls came out there was a rally in the US Treasuries for example the 10-year yield did drop around about five basis points um, to 2.42 uh, percent uh, and also you saw the expectations change in terms of the uh, the percentage expecting a hike in March that fell to 24% from 32% so again you know the market consensus was pushing that hike further out. Interestingly, later on in the day, um, the San Francisco regional president, John Williams, who's actually a non-voting member of the FOMC this uh, this year, and is actually known as kind of a, quite a, a centralist uh, centrist in terms of his views, actually said, look, you know, March is still live. Look, I still think it's reasonable to expect, um, you know, three hikes this year. And that kind of uh, sent uh, treasuries back in, in reverse, and we actually closed unchanged on the day in the 10 years, for example, at 247. So it reversed those earlier gains. Now, my read on, on the figures and what actually happened is, is look at the figures, look at the wage growth. That's what the Fed is going to be um, focused on. And John Williams' uh, comments, you know, whilst interesting, he is a non-voting member. So I, I would be tempted to play, place less significance on those and more on the actual data. And I think we're looking, you know, probably out towards June for the next hike from the Fed. Certainly suggestions that there's little price pressures at present um, coming through to, to force the Federal Reserve to, to raise rates at that March meeting. Um, let's sort of shift our focus ever so slightly to um, Brexit. We're now seeing um, the Article 50 bill now progressing to the next stage. Um, certainly we are hearing more noise about banks moving uh, headquarters offshore. Um, I mean, realistically, however, what do you see sort of the next few months looking like? There's going to be a lot of uncertainty in the next few months with regard to, to Brexit, and that's going to impact the sterling uh, bond market and, and the UK gilt market and also sterling. And the next stage is that it's going to go to a committee, and that's going to start later today in the UK. And what that means is they, that the committee will go through the uh, proposed bill line by line and propose amendments to that. Now, the Labour Party has already said that it's going to be around about 250 uh, amendments to that proposal proposed bill uh, and again you know that process is on both sides of the of, of the parliament as well so the conservatives will go through that as well and there's there's obviously quite a few pro-european conservatives that are disgruntled that they're having to go through this process and so they will be also adding amendments to that so it's going to put a lot of pressure on Theresa May's self-imposed uh, end of March uh, deadline for triggering article 50 there's also concern that you know that the parliament may not be able to get a vote um, as to whether or not it is a bad deal. Remember, Theresa May in her famous speech said, look, you know, no deal is better than a bad deal. And also there's concern uh, about reciprocal arrangements between UK citizens or British citizens, I should say, in Europe and European citizens living in Britain as well. And they want to guarantee those rights there. But again, you know, it's a very difficult cat and mouse situation that until she triggers Article 50, the European Union has said, look, we're not negotiating anything until it's a formal process. So again, you know, I think 
it's it's just uncertainty in the markets on a geopolitical uh, scheme of things at the moment, both from Trump in the States, from Brexit, and then also later in the year, you've got some very significant um, European elections, obviously France in May, and then Germany for later on in the year. So I think, you know, politics is going to be a big driver of financial markets and sentiment in particular, whether we like it or not. And it's always important to keep a, a hand on, especially what Trump is talking about, what he's tweeting about, uh, and some of the uh, policy implications of some of some of his, uh, you know, kind of more random comments and views and tweets that are impacting the market. And you've seen that in terms of the impact that we've seen on pharmaceutical companies, on health healthcare, uh, on defence companies as well. And that's going to continue, you know, as um, as his thoughts become uh, more publicly known uh, through uh, tweets and through his comments to, to the press as well. So. Whichever side of the Atlantic you're on, uh, politics, unfortunately, are going to be driving or a key driver of the financial markets uh, in 2017. And certainly interesting to note those comments that came through last week from Bank of England Governor Mark Carney saying that the 15 minutes of fame uh, for the central bankers was over and in fact uh, seeming to welcome that attention is now moving back to government and policy side um, rather than that emphasis being placed on central bankers for you know, economic prosperity. Um, Mark, we are out of time. Thank you so much for your comments today. Thanks, Natalie. Have a good one. Just to take viewers across some breaking news coming through pertaining to Duet Group, uh, the company establishing a $150 million debt facility.